first of all, you are, you are the hybrid ambassador. What does it mean? Well, that's a good question. Uh, to be more exact, uh, I'm uh, ambassador for countering hybrid threats. Uh, uh, the distinction hybrid ambassador ambassador for countering hybrid threats is important because during the peacetime we do not do hybrid we do not do bad hybrid operations we only counter hybrid i mean doing hybrid in our understanding would be during the wartime only uh, what does it mean well there are different answers but one thing is that uh, it is a statement of the fact that hybrid threats today in Finland, in Europe, is an issue uh, that has an impact on our uh, security. And it affects your security, my security. And also, uh, another thing, it is a statement of the fact that increasingly foreign and security policy also plays a role uh, in countering hybrid threats, in protecting our societies from malign external uh, influence. Let's move to the uh, another term which I would like you to describe. What means the hybrid war or what hybrid threats? What kind of threats do we face when we talk about the hybrid threats? Yeah, hybrid uh, actually is an unfortunate uh, term. Um, one could speak, for example, of uh, asymmetric uh, means, uh, non-conventional means. But for uh, within the EU, in Finland, we've agreed that we use term hybrid, uh, hybrid threats, uh, hybrid influencing, hybrid warfare. The problem is that um, it does not really say anything as such. Uh, um, it's difficult to describe, but uh, essentially we speak of, um, um, of uh, a malign external uh, interference or hostile foreign influencing. We speak uh, uh, of a phenomenon where uh, um, a third country, a state actor, theoretically can be a non-state actor like ISIL as well, but practically a state country uh, is trying to have an impact on my society on uh, our politicians, on our decision making, is uh, trying to have an impact uh, that uh, it is either illegal or it, uh, it's against my sovereignty or the, our country's sovereignty, uh, or uh, it worsens the security of the people in Finland, or it's against international uh, norms. Uh, in other words, uh, external actor is trying to cause something or uses means that are not acceptable uh, and that we need to protect ourselves from that. I mean, more practically, uh, I think ever since from 2016, two and a half, three years, we have been focusing uh, on election interference in, yes. in Europe, uh, meaning that uh, I think our focus we put our radar on the elections in mid 2016 with the uh, uh, referendum in the United Kingdom, yeah. then the US presidential elections. After that, uh, in France, Macron leaked something in Germany, maybe perhaps 20 other elections, where an external actor is trying either to have an impact on the results of the election, who will be elected, or where an external actor, and it's important to think of these motives as well, external actor is uh, trying to use elections as a vehicle to uh, destabilize our society, uh, to cause chaos to our society. For example, uh, to uh, uh, try to cause feeling in our societies that elections actually don't matter. Uh, look, we don't know what is true, what is not true. We don't know if the winner is legitimate. Uh, so if, if we would lose faith to our democracy and democratic processes, that would be a bad thing. Because I think um, the way we've organized our societies, uh, democracy, democratic process, is one of the cornerstones. Then uh, we have media freedom, pluralism, mm -hmm. uh, rule of law. But they are all related. And that's why, for example, protecting uh, integrity of democratic processes is important. But I mean, as I said, this uh, election interference was one example of uh, 
of hybrid influencing. I want to make a difference between hybrid influencing and hybrid warfare. And, and one needs to say that when it comes to hybrid warfare, <clears throat> there is not much new. If you think that a society uses all different aspects, uh, um, sort of warfare that the society has at hand, uh, and they might be economic, they might be propaganda and others, but that's at the war. But that's not new if we speak of the warfare. I mean, if you go back to the Greek mythology and see what happened with the Trojan horse, yes. when an <laughs> empty, shallow horse and some other um, sort of movements were, were used to cheat the defenders and to conquer Troja. So, um, or if you read, um, for example, um, I mean, we would use hybrid means if we are in the war, uh, if you, and, and so would others. If you read the history of uh, Finnish uh, uh, winter war, for example, 80 years ago in uh, 1939, in, in, in November, according to the Finnish history writing, Soviet Union would shoot from a canoe from Soviet Union to Soviet Union, blame Finland, and then to uh, step out from our bilateral non-aggression agreement pact, and, and, and then start a winter for three days after that. And then Finnish government, I think we are sometimes in blame that we are slow, uh, so the Finnish government would wake up and said that, oh, well, Mr. Stalin, but could we negotiate? Uh, that why, why is there a war? And then. Stalin would say, that, oh yes, he's always willing to negotiate, but he wants to negotiate with the um, real um, government of Finland. And real government of Finland is not sitting in Helsinki, but it is in Terijoki, I think in Zelenogorsk, which was a town close to Finnish border at the yeah. Soviet site, 50 kilometers from Leningrad. So, I mean, there was already a, a puppet regime created. Uh, so, in the wartime, these things do happen. And I, I think it's quite normal in the, in the warfare, unfortunately. But peacetime, not, if you ask us. Okay, so you already started about the Finland's experience, but that's, that's what I would like to ask you. The, having the special ambassador to counter the hybrid threats means that you are realizing that this is a huge threat and this is really serious. So uh, what is an experience of Finland regarding the hybrid threats, what kind of hybrid threats, the, the biggest ones you can, you, can, you can share with us? Well, I think uh, our starting point um, and the fact is that uh, Finland has been and is star targeted by hybrid threats. Uh, uh, so we have experience in countering hybrid threats. Uh, also, I think uh, we would also have a quite um, functioning national model of comprehensive security, which is a very close interagency cooperation, which is useful in countering hybrid threats. Also, one more thing that there is in Finland, if you Google the Google COE Helsinki, which is a center of excellence for countering hybrid threats. I mean, we have different elements in, uh, uh, in uh, <coughs> Finland, I think that contribute to help us to counter hybrid threats, uh, which means in terms of international cooperation that we have something to offer to the international cooperation. But we also believe that we gain because international cooperation means unity. And those things, uh, cooperation and unity, protect us. About our um, experiences, uh, well, I think uh, more generally, like uh, uh, violence and threats, they do not exist in vacuum. Violence and threats, they always have their contexts. So maybe two, and now I know I'm answering in a more generic yeah. terms, two wider uh, issues behind the uh, sort of the hybrid threats uh, uh, situation in Europe. Uh, one thing is uh, what happened in 2014, that is um, occupation and illegal annexation of Crimea. And that is the start of the war in eastern Ukraine. Uh, incidentally, ISIL, a sort of a new form of terrorism, was born in the same year as well. Same and ISIL, ago, yeah. ISIL has 
did use uh, hybrid methods in recruiting, in building so-called caliphate. But um, the changed uh, security that happened in 2014 in uh, Europe, more specifically uh, Russia's use of uh, uh, armed force in a way that we have not seen after the Second World War, which is un un unfortunate, that I think creates one uh, context for the present hybrid situation because some of the hybrid things presently are seen as a part of this uh, development that started in 2014. And then the other sort of a background is the technological evolution or revolution that we are living, which means that um, everything will be digitalized, which means that uh, media is extremely fast and effective and you can go global with all sorts of things which means that media can social media can target individual people or groups in a new way but which also means that our brains are being manipulated and targeted or our cognition in a way that we necessarily don't even understand it so um, there are really these two things the worsened security in europe and and then more global thing the um, a technological evolution and use of these technological means against us. So um, uh, this is uh, the uh, wider uh, context. And at the same time, and especially being in Georgia, uh, we all understand it's important to recognize that hybrid threats, hybrid influencing that we speak about now certainly did not start in uh, uh, 2014. I mean, obviously yeah. the war in Georgia, 2008, um, the bronze soldier issue in um, Estonia, 2007. The two cases you mentioned, I mean, two actors you mentioned right now, using the hybrid, um, let's say, the means to influence the other actors. One was ISIL and another was Russia. How much how much these, these instruments are used by the Russian side and how much the, the, how big the threat of hybrid threats are coming from the Russian side. We can, I, I know about ISIL and, and that's, that's another story maybe, maybe it's really interesting and very, very, uh, very uh, actually this tough that we would like, we have to understand what has happened with the ISIL, but let's talk mm -hmm. right now about our Russian side. Well, if you mentioned Russia or ISIL, certainly they are not the only um, actors uh, or only actors that are suspected in using uh, hybrid methods. Uh, and I, for me, it's always important, uh, not only because I'm a diplomat, but I think this is the way that we counter hybrid threats in Europe in general, that um, in our work, when we counter hybrid threats, when we counter something that is aimed to uh, destabilize or be not good to our societies. We uh, emphasize the importance of being actor agnostic or state agnostic. This uh, means that we uh, do not a priori target or even mention any country when we want to protect our democracy or when we want to protect other things, uh, counter hybrid threats, but we a priori we focus on the phenomenon, on yeah. unwelcomed phenomenon. And uh, this I think is important for several reasons. So uh, a priori Certainly, we do not say that this and that country is bad and hostile. It's only the activities that are hostile. Then after that, yes, people might start asking, like in our society, that, okay, so could you say who is behind it? And uh, then, in a case by case, I think uh, governments need to decide. There is a, a criteria for deciding when you want to attribute, when you want to publicly attribute, uh, when you want to respond. Um, uh, and uh, in the case of Finland, for example, uh, last year, we, and I think Georgia was there as well, um, in one way or another, but uh, when all the EU and NATO countries uh, last year in March uh, came out and condemned strongly the uh, uh, attack uh, by chemical agent in uh, Salisbury yeah. in United Kingdom, stating uh, clearly that uh, 
we cannot accept, we need to condemn use of a chemical designed for war uh, in, in a civilian place. And uh, uh, then stated that uh, most likely uh, this uh, uh, use of the chemical uh, came from the Russian Federation and there's no other plausible uh, explanation. Uh, here, uh, this I think uh, is an example of a case where international cooperation helped us all. It uh, helped us in our shared response. Uh, uh, it empowered us. And uh, after this case, uh, uh, related to this case obviously was that uh, 29 or 30 countries then afterwards uh, expelled uh, Russian uh, diplomats uh, to protest that this behavior should not be something that should happen during the peacetime. So uh, this, I think, was one clear reaction and also uh, a public reaction. When you, you, when you said about the agnostic at, uh, attitude towards the threat which we are facing right. from the, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's really quite correct. And uh, first of all, this could be the f first goal to, mm -hmm. to neutralize the threats which are coming in this, in this way. But the second and uh, not less important issue and not less important goal is to understand why that happens. Correct. And that's what I would like to ask you. What is, in your opinion, the aim of Russia in Finland. Mm -hmm. Why can they use these kind of instruments to influence on Finland? Yeah, and uh, one step backwards, one step backwards is that it is good and useful to understand that this issue is global uh, in one way or another. And if uh, I would come from Philippines. Uh, I would not be. I would be speaking of different countries than De if I come from Georgia or, <laughs> or, or Finland, Finland or then um, in Africa. Uh, so, but I agree with you. Uh, when we counter hybrid threats, it is important to uh, uh, understand one's own vulnerabilities. What are the vulnerabilities? of our societies, our countries, that adversary, if adversary so wishes, can uh, uh, target. For example, language, national minorities uh, could be one. Uh, unhealthy economic dependencies uh, could be another one. Organized crime can be used as a tool. One, um, there's been a Apart from the elections, and it is sad that something that is very important to our society is used as a weak weakness and targeted against us. But another big thing that started in 2015 and 16, which is used um, as a weakness against, as relates to the irregular migration and the refugee crisis. You can see lots of trolling and lots of attempts to influence uh, uh, this theme in a way that would further uh, create challenges in our society and take people from apart because it's naturally already a disputed issue but I think the external actor w would wish to uh, even amplify uh, these differences. Um, yes, I think um, uh, Russia, obviously, I think one challenge in general in Europe again is that, uh, and this has happened before as well, that. Uh, we would see differently with Russia how and on which principles to organize a, a uh, to organize European security, uh, and I think this is a bit at the heart of our um, present uh, challenging situation. Uh, and uh, when it comes to Finland, what could be the goals? Uh, obviously. One example is the security-related goals. So that, uh, I mean, Finland, uh, we are a member of the EU. Uh, we are politically aligned. But we are not a member of a military alliance. Yes, so it's, it's, I it's, think, it's uh, a difference. We have an aspiration, and, and we can understand mm -hmm. what is the goal of Russia regarding the Georgia. What is, what's uh, Finland's case? Well, we, uh, in our case, when it comes to the NATO, uh, our government's uh, white book, uh, the foreign policy white book, is saying that uh, 
Finland is a country that does not belong to a military alliance, but uh, Finland uh, closely uh, follows uh, the security developments in Finland's visit, and uh, Finland uh, uh, reserves itself a right, if we so wish, to apply mm -hmm. to NATO membership. Um, so uh, if we think of this security policy angle, uh, one of the uh, Russia's stated goals uh, uh, is, uh, would be that uh, uh, the present situation when it comes to the Sweden, Finland, not belonging to military alliances, alliance, there's only one, would continue. So uh, that uh, would be, for example, uh, one goal. Uh, okay, so uh, let's go back to the hybrid threats and mm -hmm. uh, these kind of activities. Uh, what could be the what could be the really good answer to this to this issue? How it, definitely it needs the the joint action and mm. joint answer to these threats. And what, what is the answer, and how can we uh, how can we face this kind of challenge? I think the best answer is that there would not be hybrid threats or hybrid activities in an ideal world. The hybrid does not exist. But as long as it exists, uh, there are different uh, answers how to counter it. Uh, I was already explaining a bit that I think increasingly foreign and security policy, international cooperation plays a role. Last year, 2018, was somewhat a turning point because that's when uh, we saw uh, I mean, this uh, Salisbury incident uh, really gave an impetus to the EU, to the NATO, to think, and, and the work is continuing. How is EU relevant? What can I do in countering hyper threats? NATO thinking the same thing, but also G7 or OECD. Uh, same thing, we had the ha hack to the OPCW, which was publicized in early uh, October. That, for example, inspired the EU to start. There's an ongoing work strand like how can we uh, uh, better prevent uh, hostile cyber operations? And then what are the restrictive measures? How can we sanction those actors who are behind cyber operations? So uh, the, I think there's lots of useful international cooperation. I emphasize that because I'm ambassador countering mm -hmm. hybrid threats. I, I work in this sphere, but there are many other spheres, even nationally, uh, many other work to counter um, hybrid threats. Uh, I can tell you a few examples in, uh, from Finland. One of the more uh, generic example is uh, our perhaps rather unique model of comprehensive security or, or total defense, as it's called in some other countries. But here the history goes to the 1950s when um, Finland um, did not come out as a winner from the Second World War. Uh, and we are not a very big country, and we were next to a superpower, Soviet Union. How could we enhance our security? In that situation, we in 1950s decided that we need to be united, because if we are united, we are bigger than our own size, meaning that uh, <clears throat> all the ministries and relevant agencies would meet regularly and discuss about threats to our security. Uh, meaning that not only ministries uh, and officials, but private companies, NGOs, private citizens. There was a system of preparedness in that where the preparedness during the Cold War time mean, meant that th there was food, there was um, medication, uh, that there was fuel and other things stored. Uh, and so now this old system of uh, uh, comprehensive security after 2014 has been amended, something has been added, it has been changed. Uh, uh, for example, a media pool has been added there where I think the government would work together with the media to uh, not to tell media that this is how you need to write, yeah. but to say that, look, this is what we see. This is what has happened in the field of disinformation in other countries. And uh, uh, maybe you should understand it. And this is what has happened uh, in, in, in Finland. Uh, 
we just, I guess, discuss what we see, and then it's 100% up to the media what they write. Um, but I think this um, comprehensive security model in a sort of a new amended model has turned out to be a useful thing. So we need to build uh, links between this national and international cooperation. Um, but uh, another concrete example is that, uh, and I think this increasing awareness Mm -hmm. is, is a rather Nordic model. Uh, when we would have now uh, parliamentary elections in Finland uh, uh, in the 14th of uh, April, working group uh, led by our Ministry for Justice, uh, uh, together with some other ministries and officials, uh, uh, are working with the candidates and with the parties, explaining to the candidates and parties that look, uh, this is uh, how you can be influenced. Uh, uh, and sometimes this influencing is not only inappropriate, but sometimes it is illegal as well. So you need to understand what are the limits of the law. Uh, it's also uh, working with the election officials to, to explain what are the things that has happened. Uh, for example, the computer denial of service attacks. Uh, and this applies to parties as well. Parties are being explained that, look, we've seen in different countries that some data has been stolen, so please protect your data. Um, this working group is also working with the media and explaining what are the hybrid threats that we have seen in the election meddling. Uh, and eventually, in a few weeks' time, there will also be a sort of a uh, TV uh, and other media campaign to, for the wider public just to, to explain uh, uh, that, uh, and that, that what has happened in other countries' elections uh, in a, I mean, we, our important task is to uh, keep the trust. Finland is a trust society, people trust in elections. We do not want to lose this trust uh, mm -hmm. and it can be targeted. So. Uh, the important thing is to keep the trust in a democratic process. Uh, but also, I think, uh, through this campaign, because uh, I, I think protecting integrity of democratic process is so important that through this campaign, I think we will reach uh, people's general awareness of this challenge of hybrid threats will become more, uh, it will become bigger. And at the same time, I mean, this campaign is a very good thing, but it cannot be the main thing. I mean, if this campaign, uh, hybrid threats and elections or countering hybrid threats, if that would be the main issue of the elections, yeah. then of course the adversary, someone who wants to do that thing, would have prevailed. Uh, uh, that that uh, cannot be the elections itself are yeah, the main definitely, thing. Definitely, it could be damage the idea of elections mm. itself. That, yeah. But exactly. But here, uh, and, and really, government is hundred percent neutral. There is no political ambition. But we just explain about the phenomenon. In Sweden, they did the same similar campaign very well uh, uh, last autumn, um, yeah. and. In uh, May, 26th of May, there will be European elections and then that will be a Europe-wide issue. So, this, in the elections we've seen a lot use of illegal hybrid operations and then the use of disinformation, social media campaigns. Uh, so this uh, cyber operations and uh, use of uh, uh, disinformation maybe are too most often used tools over the past few years in this. And finally, uh, I would like to speak just one part of the countering the mm. threats, which are the reaction on threats and which are the reaction on activities. Mm. Do you feel the Western reactions on the, uh, on the activities like in Crimea mm. or Western Ukraine or Salisbury, where they are proportional and adequate to, to answer these kind of threats which are coming from there. And um, are, they, are, they, are they really efficient? I think in the longer run, uh, they will be uh, efficient. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, 
we do not classify this situation. And obviously, if we speak of Georgian protracted conflicts, then the situation is different, let's say, from Nordic countries. Mm -hmm. But we would not classify this uh, uh, situation as a conflict war type of situation. Yeah. Um, if you take the elections, they are a pretty good example because I think that reflects few sort of a key ideas. Uh, I think uh, when it comes to the elections, I think, and part of the resilience is the fact that we do need to admit that uh, open society, democratic elections, they are always vulnerable. There is an inherent vulnerability to all types of influencing, be it uh, domestic or external, uh, influencing that is inappropriate and unwelcome. Uh, that is the nature, I think, of open society, of democracy and pluralism. And uh, if an external actor wants to take advantage of that, uh, uh, then external actor might sometimes be, have more impact in a short run. But I think in the longer run, if w what produces then better life to your societies, uh, I mean, democracy is not an ideal thing, but we have not invented anything better. So if we think how society works, how you will have a maxim maximum good life, good education, how your society will be innovative and, and produce things for the uh, generate uh, economical goods, there then eventually open society prevails, open society is stronger. I think we need to have trust and believe ourselves in that thing as well. Um, Yes, I know there are then more robust countries who, for example, now are very much considered that should, should one do an offensive cyber attack uh, in order to counter hybrid threats yeah. or to counter uh, ongoing hybrid threats. Uh, uh, different countries have, I, I think Finland, for example, we might have capabilities for that, but when we speak of the peacetime, this would not be the first thing that would come to the mind of uh, Finnish uh, politicians. Uh, uh, so different countries have different ways to, and sometimes one needs to be a bit patient as well, I'm afraid. Uh, but then again, I, I think, I, I want to emphasize that uh, I'm speaking from the Finnish point of view, uh, and. Uh, I, I yeah, fully I acknowledge and appreciate the situation, that uh, uh, the, the tough situation and um, a lot more serious one that you have in, in Georgia with the protracted conflicts uh, with the runaway republics, which is obviously unfortunate and not acceptable. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much. Thank you, George.